To get started, go ahead and list all the positive factors of 27. Can you find all four of them? Exactly right. The factors of 27 are 1, 3, 9, and 27. Okay, next, what are all the factors of 18? Again, nicely done. The factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Now in this lesson, we'll be talking about common factors. Common factors, as the name suggests, are factors that numbers have in common. So go ahead and identify all the common factors of 27 and 18. In other words, which numbers appear in both of these lists of factors? Nicely done. So 1 appears in both lists, as do 3 and 9. So the common factors of 27 and 18 are 1, 3, and 9. Next, see if you can identify all the common factors of 24 and 42. And if you get stuck, feel free to ask for a hint. Right, so here are all the factors of 24, and here are all the factors of 42. The common factors are numbers that appear on both lists. So that's 1, 2, 3, and 6. So then what's the greatest common factor of 24 and 42? Of these common factors, which is the biggest number? Excellent! Now the term greatest common factor shows up a lot in algebra, so you'll commonly hear it referred to as the abbreviation GCF. So as you found, the GCF of 24 and 42 is 6. Next, go ahead and identify the GCFs for each of these pairs of numbers. Precisely, so the common factors of 14 and 16 are 1 and 2, so the greatest common factor is 2. The common factors of 7 and 56 are 1 and 7, so their GCF is 7. And 60 and 80 have a whole bunch of common factors, and the GCF is 20. Finally, let's ask a trickier question. What's the greatest common factor of 15, 30, and 40? So now we have three numbers here. You can figure this out the same way as before by writing out the factors. So here are all the factors of 15, here are the factors of 30, and here are the factors of 40. So what's the GCF of 15, 30, and 40? What's the largest number that appears on all three of these lists? Nicely done. Now, if we were just looking at 15 and 30, the GCF would be 15, right? And if we were just looking at 30 and 40, the GCF would be 10. But because we're looking at all three numbers at the same time, the greatest common factor is 5. That's the largest number that's a factor of 15, 30, and 40. So for your final challenge, try finding the GCF of 8, 20, and 32. Here we'll talk about what it means for numbers to be relatively prime. But first, let's make sure you know about prime numbers. Of the four numbers here, which are prime? Exactly. 2 is the smallest prime number. 9 is not prime, meaning it's composite, because 3 is one of its factors. 15 is also composite because it has factors of 3 and 5 and 17 was the other prime number here. Now for another question. What's the greatest common factor of 50 and 70? Right, their greatest common factor, or GCF, is 10. That's the largest factor these numbers share. Okay, so next, what's the GCF of 18 and 25? If you're not sure, click down here. Excellent! So here are the factors of 18, and here are the factors of 25. The only number that appears on both lists is 1, 
So the GCF of 18 and 25 is 1. And that's what it means to say that two numbers are relatively prime. It means their greatest common factor is 1. And by the way, another way to say that numbers are relatively prime is to say they're coprime. It means the same thing. Okay, so take a look at these pairs of numbers. Which pairs are relatively prime? Brilliant! So the GCF of 26 and 27 is 1, the GCF of 6 and 38 is 2, the GCF of 13 and 39 is the number 13 itself, because 13 is a factor of 39, and the GCF of 17 and 100 is 1. So that means the relatively prime pairs here are 26 and 27, and also 17 and 100. Again, nicely done. Here we'll introduce Euclid's algorithm, which is a 2,000-year-old algorithm, or step-by-step -step process, for finding the greatest common factor of any two numbers. First, let's make sure you're comfortable finding GCFs. What's the greatest common factor of 50 and 35? Exactly, the GCF of 50 and 35 is 5. Now, 5 is also a factor of which of the following expressions? If you add 50 and 35, is 5 a factor of the resulting sum? What about 50 minus 35? Right, 50 plus 35 is 85, and 50 minus 35 is 15. 5 is a factor of both of these expressions. Why is that? Well, let's take a closer look at this difference. 5 is a factor of 50, so we can write 50 as 5 times another whole number. It happens to be 5 times 10. And 5 is also a factor of 35, since 35 equals 5 times 7. So we're taking the difference of two terms with a factor of 5. If you factor out the 5, which expression do you get? Right, factoring out the 5 gives you this expression, and that's the same as 5 times 3. So whenever two numbers have a common factor, like 5 in this example, then that number will always be a factor of the difference, because you can factor it out. This is the core idea behind Euclid's algorithm. Let's see how it works with these two numbers. We want the GCF of 50 and 35. Now any number that's a factor of both 50 and 35 must also be a factor of 50 minus 35, right? And 50 minus 35 equals 15. So the GCF must also be a factor of 15. Let's not worry about the 50 anymore and stick with the smaller numbers. So the GCF must be a factor of 15 and 35. Now, the trick here is that we can do this all over again. If we're looking for a factor of 15 and 35, that means the GCF is a factor of 35 minus 15, and this difference is 20. Again, let's replace the bigger number, 35, with this difference. So the GCF must be a factor of 15 and 20. And once again, that means it's also a factor of 20 minus 15, or 5. Let's replace the bigger number with this difference. Next, let's take 15 minus 5, which equals 10. And let's replace the 15 with this smaller number. And let's do this one more time. 10 minus 5 equals 5. And let's replace the bigger number with this difference. So now, all we have are 5s. And as you said earlier, that's the GCF. So Euclid's algorithm says to keep replacing the bigger number with the difference. And when you're left with two equal numbers, that's the GCF. Pretty cool, right? So let's look at one more example. What's the GCF of 30 and 42? Well, first, what's the difference between these numbers? Right, 42 minus 30 is 12. So then which number should we replace with 12? Excellent, so let's replace the 42 with 12. And if you keep replacing the bigger number with the difference, you'll eventually find the GCF of 30 and 42. So, 
What's the GCF? Nicely done. The difference between 30 and 12 is 18, so let's replace the 30 with 18. Next, the difference between 18 and 12 is 6, so let's replace the 18 with 6. And finally, the difference between 6 and 12 is 6 again, so we can replace the 12 with 6. The numbers are now equal, so 6 is the GCF. Euclid was a pretty clever mathematician, right? For smaller numbers, you can usually find the GCF by just knowing the factors of the numbers. But for larger numbers, or if you're writing code to do it for you, Euclid's algorithm is a great way to calculate the GCF. Let's start with the number 7 and multiply it by a few different integers. What's 7 times 3, 7 times 4, and 7 times 6? Right, these products are 21, 28, and 42, and these are called multiples of 7. Each of these is equal to 7 times an integer, like 3, 4, and 6. So if you multiply a number by an integer, you get what's called a multiple of that number. For example, 90 is a multiple of 10 because 90 is 10 times 9, and 9 is an integer. But 62 is not a multiple of 10 because 62 does not equal 10 times an integer. It happens to equal 10 times 6.2. Okay, so next, can you identify which of these numbers are also multiples of 10? Nicely done. 80 is a multiple of 10 because 80 equals 10 times 8. And 170 is also a multiple of 10 because it equals 10 times 17. 5 and 302 are not multiples of 10. So next, would you say that 10 is a multiple of 10? Is there an integer you can multiply by 10 to get 10? What do you think? Right, 10 is a multiple of 10 because 10 equals 10 times 1 and 1 is an integer. In general, every number, like 10 here, is a multiple of itself. Next, what about 0? Is there an integer you can multiply by 10 to get 0? What do you think this time? Right again, 0 equals 10 times 0, and 0 is an integer. Now numbers also have negative multiples. So which of these numbers here would you say are multiples of 3? Which of these are equal to 3 times a negative integer? Excellent! Negative 9 is a multiple of 3 because it equals 3 times negative 3. And negative 15 is also a multiple because it equals 3 times negative 5. So try putting all this together. Which of these numbers here are multiples of 5? Exactly. Negative 10 is 5 times negative 2, 0 is 5 times 0, 5 is 5 times 1, and 35 is 5 times 7. So, for your final challenge, can you find all the positive integers for which 18 is a multiple? There are six such numbers. Try to find them all. And if you get stuck, feel free to ask for a hint. Right, the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. For each of these numbers, 18 is a multiple, right? Now, you might have noticed that these six numbers are related to 18 in a special way. Can you complete this sentence? These are all the positive blanks of 18. What word goes in the blank? Precisely, these are all the factors or divisors of 18. Now, factors and multiples are closely related. For example, when saying 18 is a multiple of 6, that means that 6 is a factor of 18. It always works like that. And in a later lesson, you'll discover even more ways that factors and multiples are related. What are the first few positive multiples of 10? Well, that would be 10 times 1, or 10, 10 times 2, or 20, and so on. So then what are the first few positive multiples of 15? Right, so here are the multiples of 15 up to 105. 
Now, common multiples, as the name suggests, are positive multiples that numbers have in common. So, in these lists of multiples, the common multiples would be 30, which appears in both lists, and 60. 90 is another common multiple. It's a multiple of 15, and if we wrote out this list a little further, we'd see that 90 is also a multiple of 10. So, of these common multiples, which one is the smallest? Right, the smallest one is 30, and it gets a special name. It's called the least common multiple, or LCM for short, meaning it's the smallest common multiple. Try another example. What's the least common multiple of 4 and 5? Nicely done. Here are the first few multiples of 4, and here are the multiples of 5. The smallest number to appear on both lists is 20, so that's the LCM of 4 and 5. Next, try identifying the LCMs for each of these pairs of numbers. Excellent! The LCM of 6 and 8 is 24. The LCM of 7 and 21 is 21 itself, because 7 is a factor of 21. And the LCM of 15 and 9 is 45. Next, what's the LCM of 8, 20, and 25? So now we're looking for the smallest multiple that all three of these numbers have in common. One way to approach this is to look at the multiples of the biggest number, which is 25 for this example. So here are the first few multiples of 25 up through 225. Now in this list, you're looking for a number that's also a multiple of 20 and a multiple of 8. What is the smallest such number? Nicely done. Which of these numbers are multiples of 20? That would be 100 and 200. And of these, which is also a multiple of 8? That would be 200. So 200 is the least common multiple of 8, 20, and 25. So for your final challenge, try finding the LCM of 6, 14, and 21. 